I need to talk a little bit about tuning and setup. Um, like well, a lot of people here, I started off by building uh, a nerdy gurdy, which is the uh, the basic four stringed nerdy gurdy. Um, there is now a six string version. So what have you got here? You've basically got two melody strings. Um, not always, but often one of them is tuned an octave higher than the other. And then you have a drone. You can see this one is thicker. And then you have a trumpet string, which also has the dog which here, which is um, side tensioned. And that's the bit that vibrates as you crank and produces your rhythm section, if you like. So we need to uh, replicate those features on the uh, MIDI version. Now the first one I actually built was pretty sketchy and it was just for my own use and the idea was that I could practice with it. Um, it didn't have a crank. The idea was you'd, you'd put this handle up, you'd hold it like that with your right hand, rest this across your lap and play along practicing melodies. And um, it's all 3D printed and it's, as I say, it, it, it did work. Um, and basically all the digi goodies have um, come on from this as an evolution. So there are many versions. This is the kind of most recent one. Um, this was made of aluminium extrusions and 3D print and laser cut acrylic. As you can see, it has nicer keys. Computers on the front, so it can be removed. If you need a software upgrade, you can actually send me this whole little computer if it came to it. Um, you can see the keys moving on the back and it's got a screen. Um, Complaints about this while were while you were cranking, um, it would sometimes fall off your lap. So um, yeah, you can't please everybody. I did my best. The other thing wrong with it was that the key spacing, when you view them from the back, the stems aren't in quite the same place as on the real uh, arrangement, and that's because I made the mistake of putting the stems in the middle of each key. So if you look a real hurdy gurdy, the stems are actually not in the center of each of the keys, particularly with the higher notes. I don't know if you can see this one, for example, the stem is offset. And bearing in mind you look at them from the back, you need to have an arrangement more similar to this if you can. Um, so, to get over the criticisms of the original versions, which were the keys are in the wrong place, they're in the right place on the front, but the stems look a bit weird on the back, I redesigned the printed circuit board so now the keys are close, not perfect, they're much closer to the correct positions that you'd see them in a real hurdy-gurdy. Um, so if you play by watching the backs of the key stems moving, that's actually quite important. Still got a screen. The complaint about it falling off your lap and the crank being in the wrong place, sort of in physical space, is overcome by actually making it hurdy-gurdy shaped. So we now have a sound box even though uh, it doesn't contain anything much. It's just there to put the key box in the right location physically uh, relative to your left arm and the crank the same. Um, the, and there's also location points where you can put um, guitar strap mounts should you wish to do that. So I'm now going to move on to talking about how you actually set up and tune it. So one of the first things you might do when um, buying a hurdy-gurdy as a beginner is to buy this book by Doreen and Michael Musket. And tuning is a strange thing because with most instruments there's a kind of standard tuning and then there are maybe others for more advanced players. With the hurdy-gurdy they appear at first glance to be a multitude of tunings. So if you're a complete novice where do you begin? So um, if you open up the book you can see that for kind of basic tunings, there's the so-called GC tuning, which allows you to um, play in the keys of G and C. Um, and then, if you wish, there's also the D tuning. Um, bear in mind, there are, there are many other tunings, but you have to start somewhere. The first version of the software, or well, more re recently at least, um, we had 14 tunings that you could select from in a menu. And what I've done with a lot of help from 
much better players than me is uh, whittle this down to a set of four tunings which are offered to you in a menu which you can then modify and you modify them using an octave up and down button here which shifts all the strings up or down one octave and also there's the capo button here which simulates an actual mechanical clamp device available on some hurdy-gurdies which will um, do the job um, physically. Now sh show you the screen and I'll show you how these are set up. For this particular demo I'm going to connect the USB lead to an extender, that's female, uh, that's male, and it plugs into what's known as the Apple camera adapter which is just basically a standard female USB full-size connector there which runs to the Apple type I think it's called a lightning connector I'll also show it you working with fluid sensor on an Android phone later but just for now we're going to talk about tuning setup not about apps and things here we're going to plug it in and it's going to draw its power from the iPad in this setup open the app right now it does a self test. It's detected that there's a crank connected because the crank is connected. In other words, the key box has not been removed. Um, the key box will play, it'll do all these functions apart from cranking, um, detached from the main body. So do you want to keep the last settings? That means it will remember your previous tuning settings. This is good, isn't it? This is helpful. So I'll say no, just um, so you can see what, how to set it up. So we'll click no. Now it says dark blue button, no. Now in all these menus, this key is the dark blue button. I'll probably end up painting the ends of the keys. And this one is light blue. And we use these two keys at each end to select things in menus. So we'll press that key. It then gives us another choice. What style of display do you want? You can have a do re mi type display, which uh, is more popular in France, I believe here or we can actually have the notes on the um, like G3, G4, that kind of scale. Um, so let's have notes. So we'll find the light blue key, we'll press it, and there it goes. So now we're moving to the tunings menu. And it's, see it's giving us just four options. You select from these with keys one to four. Which keys are one to four? In our imaginary world, the keys for selecting things in this menu are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And they're used throughout the menu selection system. That's the dark blue key, that's the light blue key, and that's what everything on this menu refers to. So let's say we're going to choose the first tuning. So we'll press button number one. Right, now. It reminds you, the first line, you've got GC tuning with C drones. Melody channel 1 is G5. Melody channel 2 is G4. The trompet, that's the one with the buzzing sort of dog attached to it, that string. That's channel 3. That's C5 at the moment in default form. And then um, the drone string on channel 4 is C3. There are two more channels you have to set up. Um, on the iPad. One controls the buzz sound and one controls the sound of the key clicks because on a real hurdy-gurdy these keys make a clicking noise as they move. So if you want to just keep those as they are you just press the light blue button to continue. However you may want to alter them. How do we alter them? Right, you press See the octaves up and down buttons here? What happens if I press one of those? Right, I press the octave down button. You see how it said octave down? And you may have noticed all these went down an octave. Let me just move it, press the octave up button on the front panel again, which I'm trying to do by touch. They'll all go up an octave. I'm gonna press it now. Right, and again, see how they change? So that, it won't go any higher than that. 
So you've got octave up, uh, octave if you like, neutral, and then you've got down an octave. Right. Now you notice on the front there's a capo button. Here? Yeah? What happens if I press that? Right, watch channels three and four when I do this. So that's the a trompet string and the drone string. I'm going to press the capo button. Right, see how they all go up one tone? And it says capo on now. If I press the capo button again, the capo is released and those two strings go down a tone. So the bottom line is, using these four initial menus, just options, and then combinations of octaves up and down and capo, you, you've got a whole myriad of possible tunings, but if you're a beginner, you can just stick with picking one of the base four tunings and just playing, playing with that, maybe using the capo on or capo off as you start to read you know, what these things mean. So let's see we've accepted this tuning. We're going to press the light blue button to confirm it. Oops, there we go. Now, do you want the drones on? You can play just the melody strings or you can play with the drones on. So let's have the drones on. That's the light blue key for on. Drones on. Right, it's ready to go. So if I crank, I think some sounds should come out. Right, it's actually playing G3 as the open string. Now, what if I get bored with, also I can get a buzz out of it. How do you set where the buzz comes in? You might like to crank really fast. You adjust the sensitivity as to where the buzz cuts in and out with this knob here, which for me is set just right. What's this button for? This simulates cranking at a certain set speed. So you can't be bothered to crank, you just press it. That, right, so everything's on now. That's the equivalent of slowly cranking. See, and off we go. Now that, you might want to uh, stop cranking, of course. So what do you do? You press it again, and that's it. Now, if the key box is removed, and you go through this whole process again, it will detect automatically on power up that the crank's not attached. And in that case, you turn on the sounds or turn them off just using the blue button alone. So this works independently of the sound box and crank, should you wish something a little more portable. Um, and in that situation, you would put your hand, your right fingers through here, rest this on your lap, and with your left hand, play away.